over at the machine now, the next thing we want to do is we're going to baste some of our seam allowances in place. Now, a baste is a big sewing machine or hand-sewn stitch that is just used to temporarily hold something, and that's exactly what these will be doing. So for each of our seams, and there should be four of them, each with two sides, the two side seams and the two in seams, um, or the two crotch seams, yeah. Uh, for those, we want to switch our machine to a stitch length of four so that it's as big as it gets. Um, that means that these stitches are easy to remove, nice and temporary, but that they're going to hold things in place. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be basting three inches down on each of these seams. So we're holding the seam allowance down is our goal right now. Um, we're not trying to secure anything crazy. We just want to place our sewing machine presser foot right at the edge of our seam. And then we're going to stitch without back stitching. You don't need to bother with that. About three-ish inches down. And once you've reached the end, we can lift it up, we can clip it off, and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Now, the reason why we're doing this, why we're spending the time to do this, is we're going to be, for our next step, doing the elastic waist casing. And we want everything to stay nice and flat when we do that, because we're not going to have easy access to these seams anymore. So by basting them in place, we're making sure that they are going to lay flat like this for the rest of time. Um, and specifically, they're not going to get in the way when we're trying to feed the elastic through the casing. That's the most important part, because right now, if I'm pushing my finger into these, they stay pretty flat. But if I do it to one that we haven't done, if I'm pushing elastic through these, past these seams... It's going to go under here and get caught and everything's going to get bunched and be difficult for us to deal with. So that's why we're basting down our seam allowance to solve that problem before it happens. So I'm doing the same thing eight times, once for each of both sides of my short seams that reach the waist. It's all the seams that touch the waist are the ones that we're trying to do this to. So. You don't need to worry about doing this on the inseam because it doesn't touch the waist because the elastic casing doesn't go there. And you can feel free to pause this video. I'm just going to base the rest of these down in place on both sides. For our next step, we need to figure out exactly what our waist measurement is. So what I'm going to show you now is how to take a waist measurement on yourself. You also can have a friend help you out with this part in the class. Um, but you'll need a tape measure and then, of course, your lovely self or whoever you're making the shorts for. Um, so you'll want to take your tape measure and then you want to wrap it around your body at the point where you are the smallest. This is the opposite of where we were taking our hip measurement. This is the point where you're the smallest. It also can be helpful if you bend back and forth and kind of feel where are you tilting. For me, that's right here. Um, that is your waist. That is your true waist measurement. That's where you want to take a measurement for these shorts. So for me, my waist measurement is 31 inches. So that is how much I need to remember. I need to write that down somewhere so that we can use that during our next step when we're cutting our elastic. Now that I know my waist measurement, it's time for me to cut some elastic for myself. So I need my tape measure, some scissors, and my roll of elastic that we'll have in the classroom. This is one inch wide non-roll elastic. Um, so it is rigid this way, so it doesn't. it's not gonna get super twisty and have troubles. Now, if you remember, the last little clip said that my waist measurement is 31 inches. So what I want to do is I want to take that number, add one inch, and then cut that much elastic. So I actually am going to cut 32 inches of elastic this time. So I'm going to take a tape measure and I'm going to line it up. I'm going to take a tape measure and line it up with my elastic. And without stretching it, I'm going to unwind 31 inches of it. And the reason why we're adding one inch to whatever your waist measurement that you're using is, um, is so that we've got some overlap to sew. Because if I cut exactly 31 inches of elastic, it's going to be uncomfortably tight on me because I'm going to have to use some of that as seam allowance, which would be not fun. Okay, so now that I found where 32 is, I'm going to grab my marking pen going to make a little mark there at 32 inches and then I'm going to snip it. 
So now I've got my piece of elastic and I'm ready to move on to the next thing. Everything is basted in place. I've got my elastic cut. So what we need to do next is create a casing channel or a casing or channel for our elastic to go through. Because right now there's a lot of extra room up here. These are a very high waisted pair of shorts. Um, and that is not how they're actually supposed to be. Uh, we've got extra room here because we're going to be doing some folding over to create a tube for our elastic to go through. So to start out with, I'm going to just get one layer of my fabric laying down and I want to press it over one quarter inch. So what we're doing is we're going to iron it once like this and then we'll iron it again so that the whole casing is sitting with a nice finished edge. Um, this is the reason why we didn't need to serge this part is because we're going to finish the edge this way. And I think actually I like to, hmm. again, it's this iron and angles. I think this is how I'm going to do it. So it'll be a little, my hands will be coming from a, a strange angle on the camera, but I think this is the best way to keep myself from blocking the view that you need. So I'm checking, I'm making sure that a quarter inch is what I think it is. I'm lining it up there and then I'm going to press this. And I want to do that all the way around the waist. And so I'll move it as I go. I'm going to check in on a quarter inch every once in a while, make sure that I'm staying consistent so that my casing isn't growing or changing or experiencing new things it doesn't like. Okay, so once I've got it pressed at one quarter inch all the way around, which I do now, so I've got this nice crisp fold. Next, I'm going to want to fold it over again. This time, I'm going to fold it over an inch and a quarter. So this is the uh, width that we're going to be pinning, and an inch and a quarter is just enough to allow our elastic, which is one inch wide, room to move through without giving it so much space as to have it just like floating in there, moving around and being unsupervised. <laughs> um, so we want to check and measure that. And I'm actually just going to go through and check at each of my seams and pin and press those areas first and then go back through because I'm finding it easier to get those areas matched up first. So now that I've got these two, I'm going to press this middle area And I'm going to put some pins through there. I'm going to repeat the process all the way around. So you're welcome to pause this video and go ahead and do this step on your own. I'm going to keep the video on for the time being, um, keep recording so that if you'd like to watch me complete this whole step, you're welcome to. If not, go ahead, pause, jump to the next segment of this video, which is going to be stitching this section. But yeah, those of you that stick around and watch the, the middle parts of the videos, you're the, <laughs> you're either like really starved for entertainment or you like, you know, knowing exactly how to do the process, which I respect. But if you're here watching it for entertainment, that is a much funnier story to me. Um, cause I, I love chatting with my, with my strange people who stick around for just Abby monologue parts of the video. You're where it's at. I don't, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are, but I'm sure someone somewhere has chosen to keep watching me iron this, this portion, either because you're feeling uncertain or because you don't like trying to skip ahead in videos. That's usually me. I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna miss what I needed to find. If I skip it, might as well just sit here and listen to this girl talk. Here we go. We're almost to the end.
There. So now my shorts are pinned all the way around and we're ready to head over to the sewing machine. Over at the sewing machine, I'm ready to go. So I'm starting on the back of my shorts and there's a reason for that because we need to leave a gap to put our elastic through. So I found two pins that I like the spacing of and I think this, this gap, which is about two and a half inches long, um, is gonna be perfect for me to insert my elastic through. So I'm going to start sewing at this pin and stop when I reach this one so that I'm positive that I've got room to insert my elastic in where it needs to be. Now I'm lining the edge of my presser foot up with the edge of this fold and I'm going to stitch. And you'll want to make sure that you've returned your stitch length to normal. So you're gonna to wanna to set to three on this machine um, and not our gigantic basting stitch four. If you've still got that on there, you're gonna have some troubles. sewing around. I'm making sure that the bottom layer of the shorts is way out of the way so that we don't have any sort of strange occurrence where we accidentally sew through multiple layers of the shorts, which would be no fun. And I'm actually going to remove the tray portion because it's getting in my way. Keeping everything nice and flat. I am removing pins as I go, doing all the things that we've been doing this whole time. And I'm soon, nope, I still got more. It was a false alarm. I thought this pin was the pin I was going to stop at, but it was not. There we go, okay. So I'm gonna cross this last seam. And then this was the pin that I said I was going to stop at. So once I reach that pin, I'm going to backstitch. And then I'm going to release my shorts from the sewing machine. So for our next step, we're gonna head back over to the cutting table and we're going to get the elastic inside. Now that we've got the casing all sewn with our nice little gap for us to insert the elastic, uh, we are ready for that piece of elastic we cut. So you'll need that, you'll need your shorts, and you'll need a safety pin as well. So you're going to want to open the safety pin, insert the safety pin through the elastic, close the safety pin, and then it is going to be the thing that guides us as we try to push this through because you can feel, even through the fabric, you can feel the safety pin with your fingers. So what you're going to want to do is push and pull and kind of inch the safety pin forward through the fabric. You're moving kind of like a like an inchworm or like a caterpillar. It moves forward just a little bit. You grab it and you pull it. The best way I can describe it is I'm pushing the safety pin. This is where the safety pin is. It's hard to see in the video. I'm pushing the safety pin forward, kind of scrunching some fabric back on it with my left fingers. Then I'm grabbing the safety pin with my left hand and I'm pulling the rest of the fabric back with my right. And then I'm repeating that. So I'm bunching fabric up, holding on to it with my left hand, pulling it through with my right. Now, one thing eventually that you'll want to watch out for, right now I've got plenty of room, but you wanna make sure you don't accidentally pull the other end of your elastic into the casing um, because then it's really hard to get back out. And so we don't, we don't want that the safety pin is there specifically because it's kind of hard to feel and move the elastic on its own. It's not bulky enough, which is great. And it's what we want for a pair of shorts, but it's just kind of hard to manipulate. So this is the typical way to do things. This is also um, how we would turn tubes of fabric right side out. If we're trying to sew something like a drawstring or a tube scarf, you use a safety pin to push your way through the fabric whoop, 
And if your safety pin comes open like mine just did, you just close it, make sure you don't have any fabric caught in it, and then keep on moving. Which, mine is still open. Ideally, that doesn't happen. Okay, there we go. And right now you can really see why it was useful that we did our basting stitches to hold these down, um, these parts of the channel, because if you skip that step, when you're pushing your safety pin through, it can be really hard to get past those bulky seams because they get folded over, your safety pin gets stuck behind the stitching, it gets um, really difficult to move forward. And the goal for this class is not difficult. <laughs> it's not for everything to be hard. That, that is not my goal in any project that I'm trying to teach. Challenging but not unnecessarily hard. Plus, these are just good sewing techniques, knowing how to baste things down, knowing when to baste things down. And if you're having some trouble like I am now, because you can see that's this, this really getting bunchy over here, I'm just going to scooch some of the extra fabric that's really bunched up on certain parts of the elastic. I'm gonna scooch it over to allow myself more room to work because it was getting a little clumpy there getting a little tricky to use, but I'm getting close to the edge. Okie dokie, so there we go. We've made it back to the place where we started. So now I want to pull the safety pin out. It's returned from its harrowing journey. Um, and I also want to pull the elastic out with it a little bit. And now I'm going to take the two ends of my elastic, I'm going to remove the safety pin from here. I'm going to overlap them. Overlapping them, and then I'm going to stick a safety pin through both of them to hold them together so that I don't lose either end. Because right now, the elastic goes all the way through, but it makes um, a teeny tiny waist with a whole bunch of extra. So I don't want that. I want to pull the rest of this elastic into the shorts so that I have a shorts waistband that is the size I need it to be to fit me and also so that everything is on the inside evenly spaced. And so to do that I'm just kind of pulling, specifically I'm pulling the extra from this side in by moving the fabric around until it's laying nicely and evenly. And as you can see, the fabric doesn't need to be as gathered up as it was trying to be, which is kind of a universal thing that it wants to do when we're putting elastic through fabric. It tries to really gather hard, which we just don't necessarily need, depending on your size. Maybe you need more gathering or less gathering. Um, I, want, I want all of this elastic on the inside. We don't want to lose track of our safety pin part though, because we still need to stitch the elastic together. Um, otherwise, our shorts would have a very uncomfortable safety pin in them and we wouldn't like laying on them very much. I've almost got it. <laughs> Fun fact, everything is a little bit harder to do when there's a camera in your way. Okay. And if you've gotten yours done, you can go ahead and skip away to the next chapter of this video where I'm going to be showing you what we're doing with our elastic next. I think I'm actually, I'm gonna finagle some more with this, but I will come back to you once it's all evenly distributed. Now that I've got my elastic distributed in my shorts, I'm ready to stitch them. So I'm going to remove the safety pin from the two ends of the elastic and I'm going to replace it with a straight pin. And I want to make sure that what I'm overlapping is the equivalent of that inch that I started out with by adding. Um, so this is where we use that inch. So I'm going to put a pin through this. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch this. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch in kind of a box shape around our elastic to make sure that it's very secure. So start by placing your presser foot 
lining up with one of the edges of your elastic. You should have two different edges, one on top, one on bottom. Um, and we are going to try to keep the camera from falling over, get some better light. Um, we are going to stitch along this edge, being sure to back stitch, and then forward. And once you reach the edge of your elastic, put your needle down. Whoa, so sorry for the earthquakes of me slapping the camera on accident. Um, put your <laughs> presser foot down or your needle down, lift your presser foot up and rotate your elastic until it's at a 90 degree angle from where it used to be. And then we're going to stitch along the edge. And everything is trying to be in the way, trying to be in its, in its business. I'm going to stitch a little further until I am now lined up with my second edge. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lift, whoop, lift, pivot, get everything laying straight, and put it back down. Because the key is we're sewing in a square. We're trying to get both ends of our elastic nice and secure. And before you get to this point, you'll also want to make sure that your elastic is not in any way twisted inside of your shorts. Um, because you don't want a twisty waistband, that'd be very uncomfortable. So we'll want to check that when you get to that point. Once you've got it stitched all the way around in a square, we're going to insert it back into the case where it came from, and then we'll be ready for our next step. Now that we've got our elastic secured to itself, our next step is going to be closing up this hole. Um, because while we needed it to get our elastic in there, we don't want it anymore. So what you'll want to do for that is you will pull your elastic until uh, the two exterior fabrics, so the casing and the shorts body, are laying flat because we don't want to sew a whole bunch of wrinkles into this. I'm going to put a pin there and then I'm going to just move right away to stitching. So this whole time I'm holding the elastic taut so that I'm keeping my stitching really flat. And I'm going to enclose my casing by stitching until I reach where that little gap ended. And I'm going to backstitch in both places. And now that I've done that, I can lift this up. For our next step, we want to stitch down our elastic at a couple points so that it can't get twisted in the casing when we wash it. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to find each of the four seams up at our waistband and we're going to want to top stitch a little line directly on top of where that seam is so it should be invisible because it's right on top of where we already sewed um, just to hold everything in place and keep it from getting twisted so I'm stitching I'm back stitching I'm stopping once I get past the elastic because there's no need to keep going on the rest of it oops snip. and snip and so as you can see right here, this is what it looks like from the outside. And then on the inside, same situation. We've got it reinforced. So now it, it can't get twisted on the inside because this is holding it in place. So we're going to want to repeat that at each of our four seams up on the inside of our shorts. And I'll show you on this one and then I'll pause the video so you can do the others on your own. Um, and doing it from the correct side with the right side out is the right way to do this because you can control exactly how it looks from the outside. So if it gets a little off on the inside, that's a little secret between you and your pajama shorts. But if it's on the outside, all of your friends at your slumber party will know. And they will judge you. And by that I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if you have slumber parties, but I, I'm sure that you do and that judgment time is nigh. Um, <laughs> Alright, so that's, that's going to be it for this step. Go ahead and repeat that on all four of the seams at the waist. Now our next step is that we need to remove the basting stitches that we use to hold the casing or the seam allowances in place while we were stitching the casing. So these stitches should be really easy to remove because we did not backstitch and we used a nice long stitch on them. So we're going to use a seam ripper and we're just going to pull them out bit by bit from our fabric. I'm going to show you on one of the seams, but you're going to want to do this on all eight. All eight, or all eight sides of all four seams. Um, we're not we're not pulling out what we just did. Don't don't get confused about that. These are just the original old basting stitches that we did on the big stitch setting to hold seam allowances down and out of the way of the elastic. 
There we go. And I'm going to do it on the other side too, because as you can see, now this side doesn't have any, but this side still has one. Um, I don't want that there anymore. It has served its purpose, and now it's time for it to go away. And this is this is why we didn't backstitch, and this is why we kept the stitches really big. It's specifically so that it would be really easy to pull them out once we got to this step. Here we go. So I've got them both removed from this seam. You're going to want to repeat that on all your other seams until you've got no none of the base things left. And then you're ready to move on to the next step. 